Hello, SolarLoon here, and here is a tutorial on using the Open Broadcaster software program to record games. Um, open Broadcaster software is an open source broadcasting software <laughs> that um, records, you know, your your gameplay, or records your screen, or whatever you specify for it to record, and sends it off, uh, you know, f for live stream purposes to send it to you know Twitch or places like that where people can watch it. But you can also use it to record software or record your you know your screen and save it to a file which is very useful and this is probably like the highest quality recorder um, screen recorder that I've used by far I think it's updated pretty regularly as far pretty regularly <laughs> as far as I can tell um, they're working on and this is Windows only unfortunately but they're working on a rewrite that will push it to the other operating systems too and so hopefully I, I hope it'll keep the same kind of simplicity and uh, you know, ease of use and also the advanced settings are nice too. Okay, so when it comes to recording games, um, I, I seem like I think I've got it down where you're looking at two different kinds of games. You're looking at native pixel based games and then you're looking at um, screen fraction based games. Uh, and I have this little notepad here that basically shows what I'm, what I'm talking about and kind of reminds me, keeps my mind focused here. So native pixel based games are games that um, basically are kind of like original 2D games or that, that games that draw on a fixed pixel basis. So no matter what the screen is, it's drawing this sprite exactly 10 pixels over or whatever. Usually these games um, work on a small little box in terms of like, you know, the game renders on a small screen and then it scales up in whole integers. On the other hand, screen fraction based games are usually HD games. Uh, modern 3, 3D games, usually games like this will allow you to s either select a resolution or specify a resolution. So like they'll allow you to use, you know, 320 by 240, six, not, well, probably not that low, but like, uh, you know, 800 by 600, 1024 by 768, 1280 by 720, um, you know, 1366 by 768, 1920 by 1080. Like they'll just, you know, have a lot of, a, a wide range of resolutions or allow you to, you know, input your own resolution that you can use to set the game screen. So the things that you want to aim for when you're recording your video, obviously, are a nice quality and good FPS. So there's a couple of things that contribute to a nice quality. I didn't write this down, but a high enough kbps or um, kilobytes per second is good for keeping your quality up. So basically, you want your quality of your gameplay footage to be high. So even if you record a good resolution, if you don't, if you're not putting pushing enough pixels, or I'm, I'm sorry, pushing enough data to properly update the video, then it's going to look really muddy, really um, glitchy, and, and just bad. Uh, some good examples of this. I'm trying to think of when you would have this arise. Well, if you follow this, this tutorial and then set your settings, um, open broadcaster software settings, to like 20 kilobytes per second, it's going to look horrible. Whereas if you set it high enough, then it'll be nice and clear. So you want to have your, your KBPS uh, high enough, but the two things that you want to pursue, quality and FPS, basically they're tied to, for FPS, having a low enough resolution, and for quality, um, generally having a good enough KBPS, but it's an additional thing for the native pixel-based games. For screen back fraction-based games, basically the higher the resolution, the more detail that's going to be on screen, the better you'll be able to record it. So basically, record it as large as possible, while still keeping it low enough so that your your software OBPS uh, um, OBS can record uh, properly, you know you, you don't want to have the screen uh, be too you know muddy in that the the resolution is too low to capture all of the fine details, but you also don't want it to be too large for it to record at you know a nice frame rate. So I'm I'm aiming for 60 FPS here, by the way. I'm not aiming for uh if you're you know if you're aiming for 30 or 24, that's fine. But I, this is, these are just a, a few things I found to kind of help me hit that 60 FPS, nice, crisp, clear picture. Um, now, for native pixel-based games, this is a little different. Rather than going for clo as close to high def as possible, as close to 720p or as close to 1080p as possible, for native pixel-based games, it's better, I think, to go down to basically 1x. Basically, as small as the game will allow you to record, record that in open broadcaster software and then use something else after the video is finished to scale it up in whole integers or as close to whole integers as possible and keep the pixels sharp. 
So basically keeping the, the lowest resolution possible is good. So I'm just going to show basically some general uh, workflow here. And I think this is, yeah, this is working through virtual dub. I'm, I'm recording this. So it's kind of, <laughs> kind of weird using a virtual dub to record my screen and then using open broadcaster software to actually record the gameplay that we're going to um, see. And then I'll put the gameplay at the end of the video so you can see the result. Okay, so we have scenes here. That's, you know, your, your basic uh, kind of this organization. So you have uh, a scene, which is like your, your screen that, that you're going to be uh, recording or the things on screen that you're going to be recording. So it's kind of complex. I haven't really gotten too far into it because I just use it mainly for, you know, capturing gameplay. So just have a basic scene here. You can add a scene by right clicking. Um, and then you have sources. So you have game capture, screen cap, window cap. There's different different kinds of uh, uh, cap capture sources you can use. But I have game capture set up here. So you can just add a, a game capture one if you want it. And then you have under properties, you can select the application or use a hotkey to select the application live, so to speak. You have a few options here. Um, we won't need them for our game. And the game we're going to be recording is none other than Pixel's nice uh, little demo, Pink Hour, that was put out not too long ago. Okay, so um, let's go into the settings here. We're going to go in basically reverse order, I think. Um, there's not too many settings that we really need to keep watch for, but there are a few. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at the, the game screen. Um, if you right click on it, you can select the screen size. This is what I was talking about. This is a native pixel based uh, game, I guess you could call it. That's just a, a category categorization I, I'm using to kind of refer to the difference. Like there's no like one X mode for like Batman or, you know, for, you know, uh, you know, Minecraft. Like there's no one X, like, you know, this is one pixel in the game. It's one pixel in the on screen. Like there is no pixel in the game, but there are pixels in the game for this game. So anyway. You have 1x, 2x, 3x, etc., etc. So in this example, rather than going full screen, which is how the game kind of starts off, and then recording the screen off of that, we can go to 1x. Oh, I can't right click anymore. I have to. Oh, that's weird. I can go to um, either press escape and set the screen size like this, or I can right click once it's down in a you know, this kind of simplified screen mode and you can set it like that. Okay. So this is the game that we're going to be recording. We have our screen set up here. We want it to be as low as possible so that we have a sharp, you know, pixel recording as possible as well as easy FPS recording. Now, one thing that you might know or notice is that there's no resolutions here. So we don't know how big this square is. Well, there's a good little tool and that's WinSpy. It's a fine little application that allows you to get information about Windows. So you can just grab this little uh, spire scope, I guess you could say, this crosshair, and drag it over things, and it'll tell you about the window that it's um, that you're you're selecting. So we drag it over Ping Hour, and we can see that it is 480 by 320. All right. So let's go to settings, and we want to make sure our video is set to 480 by 320. Um, this is a resolution downscale that's useful for if you're playing a game at you know high definition or your your full screen but it's running slowly then you can go ahead and use resolution downscale to scale it down um in my re experience and i think just from my experience in making games too it would be better to scale the resolution of the game down you know by itself and then record using OP obs at 1x resolution basically uh so for example if i can't handle 1280 by 720 and I want to downscale it to 640, 640 by 360 it's better to set the resolution of the game to be 640 by 360 and then just set it here 640 by 360 and set the resolution downscale to none uh, that way you don't have any filtering that way OBS doesn't have to do any re um, any, any scaling when it does the encoding etc etc you know the game isn't outputting at twice the resolution that you really need it to things like that Okay, so this is our window. Um, we go ahead and set the video size, correct? We click preview stream. And you see that the game here is huge. So for one thing, the game's only updating when I'm selecting it. So by selecting it, you know, it's updating in the OBS uh, preview as well. And you see that the screen's huge. Why is that? Um, that's a little kind of a bug, I guess you could say, uh, where you, you basically, if you change the screen size, 
then OBS is basically getting the information when you hit refresh or when it's selected, when the uh, application is selected. So if you hit refresh, then it'll go ahead and have the correct screen size. All right, so there's the screen size, everything's good. Now, next thing we wanna do, under encoding, we wanna have a good KBPS. This is what I was referring to uh, earlier. Um, so I'm not gonna go through all of the settings because it's you know kind of each thing is kind of complex. I'm just going through a few of the things that I found useful when I was recording this as well as when I'm recording other things. Um, so you wanna have a KBPS that basically keeps things nice and clear. So I have a formula that I found on, um, I think it was a video editing, Adobe video editing software help page, which is basically the width that you want multiplied by the top, uh, height that you want multiplied the F by the FPS that you want, and then divided by the comp compression divisor for the codec that you're using. And this is using X264. Um, I don't know if this, if H264 is the same, I'm going to assume that it's similar at least because I was using 2000 kilobits per second or now I wonder if it's kilobytes per second. <laughs> Bitrate, bitrate, kilobits per second. Um, so yeah, I was using 2000, it was nice and pretty clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it's similar. So the um, video size that we're looking at is 480 times 320. We're trying to get 60 FPS video and we're trying to divide it by 8250. Uh, so we see that the amount we get is 1117. So 2000 is more than enough for our amount or for our, our gameplay here. So you can just go with this number or whatever. Um, the more um, kilo, kilobytes, kilo, yeah, ugh, the better the kilobits per second value you, you have, the more quality you'll have, but also the bigger the file, I believe. So you kind of want to uh, keep an eye out for that. As for audio encoding, you want to make sure that you're um, encoding you know, MP3 or, or AAC. Uh, I use MP3, 44.1 kilohertz. Um, have a nice, uh, a, a large enough bit rate as well so that you have nice clear audio. Seems like a waste to have stereo channel, you know, du dual channels when, you know, most of the time you're not dealing with stereo games that like really push it. So if you really want to, then you can add it. But, uh, you know, just for this, per for my application, I, you know, I didn't really need it. Um, for mode, you want file output. Nice name, you know, simple stuff. We went over here a little bit earlier. We can set the FPS to 60. Like I said, it's better to record it normally and have no uh, downscale than to record it at high def and downscale it. Um, audio, some basic stuff. Uh, desktop, desktop audio device, I have it set to default and my default is out my speakers. So I can record what I'm hearing, which is nice. Um, some audio cards can do this, not everyone can. Um, as for advanced, I'm not really messing around with a lot of this stuff. I believe this is default. I believe this might be default. Most of this stuff is default. The one thing that I changed was this process priority class um, is normally at normal, I believe. I set it to above normal. And that was basically, if I understand it, um, I would like my video, my computer to serve my video before my game. And that's because I would rather play a game at 45 FPS and have a 45 FPS, you know, video, basically knowing that my video is slowing down the gameplay, than to run a 60 FPS game for an hour or two or, you know, whatever amount of time, then check my video and find that it's full of lag and full of, you know, uh, frame drops because the, the computer couldn't keep up. So basically, I'm sacrificing the gameplay, which is a normal process priority, I believe, in favor of my video. So I basically want my video to come through consistent no matter if it, if it's 20 fps or 10 fps or whatever just make sure my video's running and my game's running on whatever cpu time you know it, it can get oh all right well i think that's everything yeah i think that's everything um one little trick one last little trick say i'm trying to record this video and say this is a much smaller window um, that's like, you know, 160 by 120 or something. That's like darn near impossible to play because of the size. Uh, one nice little trick, if you're not using a game that requires a mouse, um, and you're playing via joystick or possibly keyboard, I haven't tried it out with keyboard, but what you can do is go into settings, set always on top, and when you click preview stream, uh, and, and select the game, you see, even though I selected the game, this screen is still on top and it's bigger. So I can stretch it and make it even larger and then re return the game and everything's good. I can even go to full screen preview mode 
tab over to the game and it's still showing the preview. And since I, yeah, it, it works with the uh, keyboard too. The mouse, I believe, would not work though because this is the projector. This is the uh, projector, the preview of the game. Uh, I'm sorry, of open broadcaster software. So that's a nice little trick if you're trying to record something small, uh, you know, get a nice FPS value while, uh, you know, playing something really small. It's kind of difficult to see. You can go ahead and set, set it to be on top, set it to be full screen, tab over to it, and go ahead and play. Okay, well, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, see you guys later. And uh, here's some footage um, of Pink Hour. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, you have fun learning how to, or not learning, <laughs> you have fun recording videos and gameplay and, you know, stuff on your computer with open broadcaster software. Hopefully they'll finish or continue to work on the uh, open sort of the, the port to other platforms. And we'll see them on Linux and uh, Mac too, because it's, is really nice. All right. Oh, and if you want to help out, you can donate to that on their website. I'll put a link in the description where you can find that software. Okay. Thank you very much, and uh, you have fun.